Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. If we're using European style spear guns, you know how expensive these rubber bands can be. And another problem that they have, they usually start to deteriorate around here and eventually break. So today I'm going to show you a very easy way using simple tools how to remove these plastic inserts and reusing it to make brand new bands that look just like the ones from the store. First I'm going to cut the rubber band as close as possible to the plastic insert. And now, all of these have a little piece inside. Usually it's a, like a ball bearing, or it could be a small plastic cone, like this one here. These are all the different things that I found in different rubber bands. The most common is the ball bearing, then the plastic cone. This is a plastic ball, and I found it in this very old rubber band that I had for many, many years. And what's interesting about this one, it has this little hole that goes right through and to me it looks like a bead from a necklace. This one I suspect it's a ball bearing because usually they have a little bit of rust stain around this hole. To remove it, I made this little piece, it's just soft wood and um, it could be any size but this one is 3 centimeters by roughly 9.5 by 1 centimeter thick. And I made uh, these holes oh, and these cutouts. This is just to be easier to clamp in the vise. So now I put the plastic insert and um, with this little punch, it could be anything, it could be a nail, just the tip needs to be flattened. And now with a hammer and this little container, I put it underneath to catch that little ball. Yeah, it's out. I'm gonna take the, the rubber too, but for that I need a bigger punch. So there's the little piece of rubber and the small ball bearing. And it has a little bit of rust. Got the power drill clamp in my vise and using this sanding disc I'm gonna start grinding the ends of the rubber bands to fit the plastic inserts. I buy these in bulk which is a lot cheaper than buying pre-made rubber bands and another advantage this way I can cut it to whatever length I need it as I need it. First thing I'll do is to grind the ends. Okay, now with the measuring tape, I'm gonna mark a line two centimeters away from the tip and another one at three centimeters on both sides. First at two, second at three. And now with masking tape, I wrap a couple times around over the first line. And the same on this side. Okay, and now I start grinding the taper. I'm going to do the same on another one to make a pair of these. The grinding is done on both rubber bands as you can see and by using the tape as a visual reference it was very easy to grind the taper uniform all the way around. 
But now it's time to remove the tape and start fitting the rubber bands into the insert. I made this hole just a little bit smaller than what the diameter of these threads are. The threads are 14 millimeters with a 1 millimeter pitch and because the wood is soft it was possible to use the insert itself to cut the very shallow threads and now I just have to tighten this in all the way down, clamp it in the vise and start fitting the rubber bands. Don't use any oil, soap or silicone, it will not work, it's just too greasy. It will go in but as soon as I leave it, it will come out. The only thing I use is a little bit of saliva, so just wet the finger, not much, and now just start to pushing it in and twisting it at the same time. And it will start to come out on the other side, so a little bit more. Okay, that's good. Now I flip this around. And with a pair of pliers, I just pull. But don't pull just on the pliers. Pull both ways. It will go in much easier. And I'm going to pull up to where the taper ended. And I think I got it. Yep. So as you see, there's the grinding. And there's a little bit of um, rubber that wasn't ground. So this is the first step of fitting the rubber bands into the inserts. And now I'll do this side. So it will be the same thing. A little bit of saliva. Twisting it and pushing it in. Okay, it's good. Okay, I have to measure the length of the rubber band. I want these to be 18 centimeters long and right now they're measuring 17 and a half, which is good because once the rubber band is finished, it will stretch a little bit and uh, will end up with the 18 centimeters. And now with the wire cutters, I'll cut this excess rubber. And uh, I finish it with the bench grinder. On this color pencil which is the same diameter as the ball bearing and I cut off a small piece and I glue on this rubber band. And I also made this bracket that goes like this and from a old wishbone, the ones I used the v-shaped wire, I saved the cups and now I'll use it but first I'm gonna put some hot glue in and the glue will fill up the area from the rubber band to the bottom. Now I just have to let it dry and um, I have to drill a hole on the bottom and thread it to 5 millimeters. And now I'm going to use a 4 millimeter drill and after I'm going to tap it with the 5 millimeter tap. If you don't have a tap, you can make uh, one out of a screw. Just file a couple cuts around the screw and uh, for plastic or even aluminum, it works very good. Now to topping, I'm going to turn the chuck by hand. This can be done with a power drill. 
The only thing is, it's important that the hole be as straight as possible. With the drill press, it's much easier. And from another pencil, but this one with the diameter of the base of the small cone, I'll do the same. And finally the moment that we all have been waiting for, how to put the ball bearing inside the rubber band. And for that I made this jig using this bracket before. This one is 3 millimeters thick, this one is 5 and with this uh, 5 millimeters threaded hole. And I clamp this here. And now, once again, I'll use uh, just saliva, nothing else. And I got the cup from the wishbone. I dropped the ball in again with saliva and I pressed it in place. And now this goes here. And I made this screw. I changed a little bit here the tip and I made this uh, knob to be easier to turn. I'm gonna put a line here to see how much this will move because the rubber will come out a little bit. And to prevent that it will come out a lot because there's a lot of pressure inside here when I push the ball in. I'm gonna push it that way and at the same time turning this screw. Turning and there will be a time that uh, the pressure is so much that, uh, okay, I can see the line now. It's moving and now I'll back up. So we moved about, I would say, two millimeters. Okay, now I'm gonna turn this around because I wanna check it to see if the ball is at the right depth. Okay, it needs to be to the red uh, tape. So I'm gonna see if I can drive it a little bit more. I guess that's as far as we'll go. And now this is the moment of the make it or break it. Well, it passed the test. Let's see how it looks inside. Unscrew this. Yeah. It's inside with this wire. I'm gonna see how deep. Yeah, it's right. The ball will be, imagine the ball from this point to where the wire is right now. So any less than this, it's no good. The rubber will come out. Well, I'm gonna do this side now. I tried this with oil, liquid soap, silicone, nothing worked, just too greasy. And uh, when I pushed the rubber, it would just come out.
And we got one here. Now I'm gonna do this one here, but using the cone. So once again, lots of saliva. It works and it's cheap. Now with the small cones, the, um, this knob will be a little bit farther in because it uses less space than the, um, the ball bearings. And very important, keeping the pressure on this side. Okay, checking the, the depth. Yeah, you see this one here went a little bit uh, farther in with the ball bearings was about there and this one gets a little bit in and won't go any farther. And let's test it. Oh yeah. Very good. I'll do this side now. And let's test this one here. When I put the inserts, I left half a thou, well, half a thou, half a centimeter shorter, and uh, yeah, it's right on 18 centimeters. And this one, right on. Just a few but very important tips about this project, especially if you're planning to make something similar to this. I would say first, don't interchange these. The plastic inserts look very similar on the outside, but they're not on the inside, so mixing them up will not work. For the rubber bands, use the ones from, or if possible, use the ones made from latex rubber. And with this protective coating on the outside, they will last much longer. The only drawback is that compared to the ones I used, these are more expensive. And to cut the taper, definitely use the tape. It makes that job so much easier and it works every time. This piece that I made from uh, soft wood using a 14 millimeter with one millimeter pitch top to cut these threads, it's the best way to do it. The way I did it, it will work, but will not last as long. Now about this jig, I can give you a few dimensions for these brackets. This one here, it's eight centimeters long, two and a half centimeters wide and three millimeters for thickness. This one here is five, two and a half, and a little bit over seven centimeters long. And the spacing between the two brackets, 32 millimeters, which take us to the wishbone cups. If you don't have any used ones, it's well worth it to spend a little bit of money and buy new ones. These things, they're not too expensive, and this made this project possible. The ones I used are 30 millimeters long. Now about the punches, you saw me on the beginning of the video using this one with something similar to this, but be careful with these bigger ones because sometimes not so good things can happen. Look at this. Yeah, the ball is out. And now to remove the rubber with the bigger punch. That's not good. I was a bigger defender of the bigger the better, but that doesn't work every time. Uh, what else I have here? Okay, this piece that I made, I made this from a 5mm screw. And I can give you a few dimensions too. This one end up to be now 38mm long. And at the tip is 36 
and a little bit down is a little bit less 2.3 diameter I made the knob but it's possible to use a wing nut it will work just as fine and now the final product I just have one thing to say it's well worth it to spend a little bit of time and making a few parts to start making these at home price wise these are less than half of the price compared to the ones pre-made and another advantage it's this way it's possible to do whatever size is needed as we need it and finally i hope you liked this video and if you're not a subscriber i invite you to visit my channel and if you like what you see in there don't forget to give a big thumbs up write a comment and obviously subscribe will definitely encourage me to make more videos like this one so for now i gotta say thanks for watching my videos and i'll see you next time on mr my videos for you bye bye